Michelle and Susan. <laughs> hey, ladies. Um... Hey, when we went to go get our ghost equipment, we can't find it. Like, our case is gone. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> know what would have happened to it. No. You don't? <laughs> um, well, okay. Uh, so, we're in Vermont. What's yeah. going on in Vermont? <laughs> um, it's a, mm. it's called the Vermont Bear Film Festival. What? It, it's boys it, only. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a bear film festival. It's boys only. It's, it's yeah. bear, bear burning man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes place on this huge old farm and it turns out it's haunted. We think some of them have kind of a, a questionable queer history. Well, that's awesome. And look, let's be honest. It's about time we um, went on the hunt for a new bear. I totally agree. Thousands, thousands of bears, and I'm very relieved that our ghost. Is... Uh, Great. Lost. Lost. <laughs> Naked people. The boys were unaware that this particular bear event Welcome to Vermont. is clothing optional. <laughs> there is an animal kingdom of subcultures in the gay world. The otters, the cubs, the pups, wolves, chickens, giraffes, bulls, manatees, and of course, the pig. My personal favorite. But where do bears fit into this big gay Noah's Ark? The bear community is basically gay men, probably any age, but most of them I'd say we're in their 40s to 60s or 70s, that are furry, that's an important part, and usually a little bit bulkier, uh, bigger guys that like bigger guys. Human bears don't roam naked as a rule, but the freedom they show during this particular weekend shows their belief in not being overly body conscious. While they're waiting for brunch. Resistance to male body shaming is what started this subculture in the 1970s. And it was about body imagery. It was about being able to share and love and all these things without worrying about what you look like outside and just relaxing and stuff like that. And I thought that was pretty cool. Queer filmmaker John Scagliotti hosts the annual event on his Vermont farm. His house has had plenty of time to get a few skeletons in its closets. This is a, a very old house, as you can imagine. It, it started around 1780. And we realized that this place had a really kind of amazing history in terms of the kinds of people who started living here and that they were very similar to us. One is a farmer from the early 1900s. They called him the old bachelor, and the old bachelor is code yeah. for an unmarried man, kind of uh, living alone, most likely gay. Priel was his name. He started like a still in the backyard. A still to make liquor. Uh, Michael Yao helps run the annual weekend. The stories are that he had parties every Saturday for the young bachelors in the area to come and buy his moonshine, hang out and drink with him. This has been a, like a party house for a long time because Pearl was in 19, right at the turn of the century. But today, Priel haunts the grounds and especially the old house. Priel is a little more out there about, you know, he'll climb up on the bed or he'll open the bathroom door while you're taking a bath. Or, and it's one of those old timey latches, so you can hear it when it snicks up. And then the door starts creaking open. He's not aggressive, he's just like mischievous maybe, right? Um, I think he's um, sexual, and uh, okay. he likes to pat men on the ass. I mean, lots of women were in that bathtub. The door never, no woman ever came down saying, oh, ooh, somebody opened the door. 
And that was one of the things that Priel might be doing just as a kind of a... A prank. Prank. With some added benefits for him. Well, maybe an added <laughs> benefit for him. He probably enjoyed it. He yeah. thought it was fun. Paranormal activity is also going on in this room. The, the big, what we call the long room, where, uh, you know, we assume Mother Honeywell was living in there. Mother Honeywell has been labeled in local law. Well, she's called a witch. And we know that a lot of times, people who are witches, there's another term for lesbians. Yes. People who stay overnight in this room often hear two women and the sounds of teacups. People said, oh, Mother Honeywell has friends over and she's having tea parties. So these were all funny stories, but now when people start taking it a little more seriously, it kind of is kind of scary. The team has two strong leads, so they decide to organize an investigation for the bears. Like, thanks for coming with us. Their first stop is an old cemetery on a nearby hill. So this cemetery is you know, one or two generations of the family that lived on the property. Like, there's just this, this continuous coming together of family in one place. Creel, he created kind of a community for himself with the, you know, the gentlemen from around town. And where we are in the present day is uh, you know, a group of guys coming together to enjoy a weekend together. That, that chosen family is what Queer Ghost Hunters is about, making sure that the stories from the past get remembered. The summer night is hot and humid. The cicadas and crickets aren't the only ones making themselves heard tonight. As soon as the group begins talking to the spirits, the spirits talk back. Whomever you are, are you someone that is um, buried here? Okay. They said yes, if they were buried here. Did you identify as a male? No. Okay. Could it be the woman who haunts the upstairs of the old house? Is it Mrs. Honeywell? Um, are you Mrs. Honeywell? Yes. <laughs> the theory is that she was labeled a witch because she was romantically attracted to other women. But maybe it goes deeper. Were you actually a witch? <laughs> yep.